title, Evolutionary Genomics, an excerpt from my conversation with Eugen Koonin, PhD, November 2022. Patricia Flatley Brennan, RN, PhD, Director, National Library of Medicine. Dr. Brennan is seated with Dr. Koonin at a table in a large room. We've talked before about your interest in genomic evolution and that the, the manner in which organisms change over time. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about that now, and if you could specifically talk a little bit about the challenge of understanding conservation versus mutation. Eugen Koonin, PhD, NIH Distinguished Investigator, NLM, NCBI. Oh, I, I, I have to start my response uh, mm, to this. Um, a question uh, that is somewhat um, um, tired aphorism of the um, famous geneticist Theodosius Dobzhansky. Uh, um, nothing in biology makes sense except in light of evolution. Okay. Uh, um, this is oft repeated, but uh, um, remains nevertheless completely valid and essential. Uh, all genomes that exists, exist on our planet um, result from billions and millions of years, uh, uh, billions and millions of years of evolution. Um, it's uh, entirely impossible to understand how they work uh, um, without taking this into account. To put it very simply, uh, when we uh, compare genomes of either closely related or distantly related organisms, uh, we delineate conserved and less conserved variable parts. And what we can see is that the highly conserved parts are involved in functions that are essential for the organism's, uh, organism's survival. Conversely, um, the parts that are variable um, contain um, uh, genes uh, um, that are involved in um, interactions between organisms and in interactions between organisms and the environment. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, we have been talking about viruses. For instance, uh, the numerous genes uh, um, involved in uh, um, uh, defense uh, um, uh, against viruses and other pathogens. Um, these are also important genes, but they are not important all the time. They are, become important only uh, when um, uh, the organism is assaulted by uh, um, the particular pathogen. And therefore, uh, they evolve much um, faster, and they, they are locked in what is often called arms race between uh, hosts uh, and parasites. Mm. Even if we are not mm, excited about the fundamental interest of the evolutionary process, for purely practical reasons, to understand what is important in genomes, uh, which parts, uh, mm, and uh, mm, which parts are involved in mm, highly conserved functions that are common to a great variety of organisms and which are involved in specific ones in the process of adaptation that occurs in front of us, uh, mm, uh, we uh, must perform uh, mm, uh, evolutionary genomic analysis on a scale that is most appropriate for a given task. So when you speak about conserved, this is not only sections of the gene that appear over generations of the organism, but also that appear commonly across groups of organisms. Um, to put a bit of a, a, a perspective onto this um, importance, um, essentiality of the uh, evolutionary thinking for understanding life, um, it's useful to note that by now it's a firmly established plain fact that all cellular organisms, I'm not talking about viruses, all Which cellular answer. organisms that Mm, uh, exist on this planet uh, mm, originate from a single common ancestor, so-called LUCA, last universal cellular ancestor, that um, mm, uh, existed uh, about 
four billion years ago, or just a little bit less, maybe. Oh. This was uh, um, probably the most brilliant hypothesis in the history of science proposed by none other than Charles Darwin. Uh, but but uh, at the time, it appeared a wild speculation. Uh, but uh, now it is a plainly established fact. So uh, the entire history of life, the, the unimaginably long uh, history of life on our planet, spanning about four billion years, um, is uh, permeated by persisting evolutionary relationships. Uh, there is, a, to be even a little more specific, there is about a hundred of genes that are shared by all cellular organisms, from mammals to plants to amoeba to bacteria. Of course, uh, mm, uh, the higher we mm, go in the evolutionary tree, the more, uh, the larger are the sets of conserved genes. See, mm -hmm. different bacteria, um, mm, the huge variety of existing bacteria, may share um, mm, altogether about, say, 500 genes, mm -hmm. uh, mm, with a few exceptions. Um, mm, uh, whereas, let us say, all animals, um, mm, uh, share several thousand genes, seven or eight thousand genes. Mm, uh, whereas if we, for instance, uh, mm, uh, look uh, mm, at, let's say, humans and mice, mm -hmm. well, that cannot be offensive in any sense, but these organisms share the great majority of their genes, about 80%, uh, mm, which may uh, amount to something like about 20,000. What we call homologous genes, genes that come from a common ancestor or, um, or, um, that existed in the, in the genome of, let us say, our ancestors with mice, or, um, they usually retain the same functions. Or, um, this is more complicated in the sense that mm, in the course of evolution, what often happens is uh, so-called duplication of genes okay. uh, mm, when two copies are formed. And then they diverge and acquire somewhat different functions. So when we look at two related sequences, we have to be careful about inferring the exact same function. But nevertheless, there is always a, some type of functional relationship. Do they ever revert? Revert or recover to early function? This is an interesting question for somewhat complicated statistical reasons. This is highly unlikely. Okay. But this is not to say it never ever happened. Uh, but this is really not a major route of uh, mm, evolution. In order to understand why. This is very little theory is actually required. Um, mm, uh, but it's extremely unlikely to go back. Text, Evolutionary Genomics, an excerpt from my conversation with Eugen Kuhn, PhD, November 2022. Gray and blue logo, NIH, NLM, Serving Scientists and Society.